Hello, I am Mayor Sherry Cantor. Welcome to Talk of the Town, where I have the opportunity to bring you, share stories, bring people to you that benefit our town and uh, people that you are will have interest in uh, and I think find very, very uh, informative. Today with me is our Director of Library Services for West Hartford. Uh, she has been a long-term member of the West Hartford community, uh, grew up here and lived here, and she has been in the library system for a long time and recently became our Director of Library Services. Uh, and Martha has done amazing uh, programming. Um, she has really made such an, a big impact uh, since she's been here, and we are so excited to talk to her. And I wanted to um, have her tell you a little bit about the West Hartford library system, uh, an overview, and, uh, and describe a little bit of, of also we have a foundation, the Friends of the Library. So, mm -hmm. hi Martha, welcome. Hi Sherry. <laughs> So I think one thing people don't really realize about the library is, first of all, there has been some library-like entity in the town of West Hartford since 1753. Wow. So that's kind of an amazing thing. Obviously, at that time, it's based at the church, which is the center of government and all communal life at that point in time, and it's by subscription, which is standard for the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not really until 1897 when the libraries come under the umbrella of the town and are funded by the town and are free and open to everybody who lives here. So that means that next year we'll be celebrating our 120th birthday, which wow. is kind of an exciting thing. Yeah. We are very blessed in West Hartford to have three wonderful locations. We couldn't have better placement of our library facilities because we've got our library here right on Blueback Square in the center. And that's our main facility. And then we have libraries in Elmwood, the Faxon Branch on New Britain Avenue, and at Bishop's Corner where we are very happily connected to the Senior Center, which is a wonderful synergy, and we're thrilled about that. On average, every day we have, every day that we're open, we have about 1,500 people visit one of those three libraries. Of course, through our website, people can visit us any day, any time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that's also something that's new in my lifetime with the West Hartford Public Library. Um, that's a fairly recent development. Um, we have about 230, 230,000 physical items and a number, an, another 24,000 downloadable electronic items that live in the cloud and you can pull them up on your phone or your device or whatever you like. Uh, about 40% of our town residents have library cards, which is a pretty good average. We'd like to see that bump up, but that's pretty good. For If I look at other libraries around the state, that's, we're, in a, we're in a good place. So West Hartford reads, which that's, I'm, I'm happy about. That's <laughs> terrific. Um, we do um, over 1,000 programs a year mm -hmm. for all ages. And we, last year, we had over 30,000 people attending various programs wow. at different points in time. Um, we have 95 computers through the system that are available for public use. We have wireless capability in all three library locations. And about, on average, 450 people a day use either the wireless or the, the public access computers. So we're a busy place. Yes, you we're, are. We're, and you are a center of a lot of activity. And what I, and, and at every age, you know, when we had talked about yes. uh, having people come as young adults, then they become adults. They have children. They are, may go to a different room in the library as a focus right. for periods of the day. Um, but it is a full life cycle kind of an activity and a resource for everybody. Uh, and it is important to appeal and meet those needs of all of those different times in your life when you need uh, exactly. the library and want to jo to go to a library. Um, just talk about the dynamic of the Friends of the Library and and, and actually okay. you are governed, the library is governed by a separate board. Right, we are. Right. The library board is five members of the West Hartford community. They are appointed by the town council, right. as you well know, and they serve for um, five-year terms. Mm -hmm. They can serve for a second five-year term, but then they're then they, then they must step away. Um, and we've been really lucky over the years to have wonderful members of our, our board. In 1981, um, we established something called the West Hartford Library Foundation, and that was established by the library board as the entity that can accept 
donations on the library's ha behalf. So in recent years, the Library Foundation, which is the five board members and then four additional community members, the foundation has run two major capital campaigns. Mm -hmm. they, they were very instrumental in raising the money, a lot of the money, to, to renovate um, the Noah Webster Library, which is the main library in the center, and then also the Bishop's Corner Library, which was renovated in 2012-13. Um, and so that is the, the entity that exists to accept major gifts for the library and on right. our so behalf. So it's a 501c3. Yes, it is exactly. a nonprofit organization. Nonprofit organization. And is tax deductible for people that want to donate. Donate, so absolutely. Which is really important. Right. And a lot of the furnishings, and like you said, yes. the, the, uh, all the work done inside. Right came from what from the, the foundation what I like to think of the foundation is our source of all the bells and whistles right and so we're very lucky mm -hmm. because it allows us to do some things both in our facilities and then with programming right. that we couldn't do um, we were very fortunate the, the foundation um, the library was very fortunate in 2005 to receive a major bequest mm -hmm. and that's something that the board and the foundation are looking to sort of develop that as an opportunity for people to support the library, it's a wonderful way. And, um, the and money, this was a patron. This who, this was a librarian, a librarian actually. Right. Amazingly, and I know it was um, a it was a remarkable and very heartwarming. It was. It was. It gift. was my boss, mm -hmm. Tom Kilfoyle, mm -hmm. who was my boss for 25 years, mm -hmm. and um, a, a, came to be a dear, dear friend of mine, mm -hmm. and certainly a mentor to many of the people my age in the library profession. So And it was quite a surprise. It was a surprise. Mm -hmm. And Tom's gift has allowed us to do some wonderful things. And it really was the thing that I think made the foundation sort of say, okay, mm -hmm. we, we can do this too. Right. And um, so that's wonderful. And then the other advocacy group for us is the Friends of the Library. Now they yes. are separate. They are okay. also 501 C3. C3. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I usually mix those up. Um, and they are, they help us in a, a number of ways. They volunteer for us, they run used book sales for us, and the money that they are able to raise comes back to us uh, in the form of some of the programs they have specifically chosen to support, such as our Museum Pass program, right. which allows us to offer discounted admissions or free admissions to local museums um, all over Connecticut and some in Massachusetts mm -hmm. um, for families. And um, that it's a terrific program, very popular, very well used. We've got some great museums. We keep adding new museums. Um, and it, it really is a wonderful thing. So you check out the museum pass by calling us or going online. You can do a lot of them online. We're adding to that this year. We're, we're hoping to add some local arts groups mm -hmm. and Playhouse on Park oh, has already wonderful. stepped up. Oh, and I didn't know that. That's, that's great. We haven't quite, so you're, mm -hmm. you're one of the first <laughs> to know. Okay. Um, we haven't quite gotten the, the mechanics of it okay. worked out, but um, there will be um, a buy one, get one opportunity for every one of their performances that's going great. forward. And then we're hoping some of the other local arts groups will want to support us in that way. It's good for us because it brings people into the library to use the library, mm -hmm. and it also means that it's you know wonderful publicity for them, and it, it means that more people get to share in the wonderful arts opportunities that we have going on we here. We have a very rich arts culture in West right. Hartford with our own symphony, our own ballet, exactly. and our, obviously the Art League and the Webster Houses. Right. We have so much available. Exactly. And it's great, and people may not know that when right. they walk in the library. It could be a little bit of an exposure, right? You know, to right. what, what's around, especially mm -hmm. a new family. And we have—I just had—I uh, have two new family neighbors that moved in and are learning what's what's in the area. They're not from the area, and learning that wow, there is a lot to offer. It may not be, you know, with neon lights and everything. Right. We'll walk down the street and you see it. But there is so much, and, and that's a wonderful way to educate our residents about the all The library is very often a first stop for people who move right. into town. They do come to us fairly early on in the process mm -hmm. to get cards, and that's a great opportunity for us to sort of be community ambassadors right. and let people know what's going on, not only in the library, but also in the town. Right, right, um, absolutely. So. I want to talk about some of the exciting things that, that you have done. Uh, and I had the opportunity and the pleasure of, of being a uh, a witness to a couple of the programs so but I want to share it with our public so 
you have received a couple of grants and yes. one of them and correct me if I'm wrong, is the West Hartford Places and Faces. About four years ago, uh, you started a with Google, right? right? And you started to document or have residents document their history and stories right. with West Hartford. Right. That one was actually not a grant. Oh, that I'm was sorry. simply a, that's quite all right, because a, a grant <laughs> grew out of it. From that. A exactly. grant grew out of it, yes. Sherry. And so I you're... actually noted that, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the um, West Hartford Places and Faces is a project that we have put up on a site called History Pin, which mm -hmm. is a Google affiliate. It's an international thing. There are people all over the world posting to this site, and it's a pinning site, so it's a social media kind of thing. So to a Google map, you can pin a photograph, a scanned image of something in your community. And um, you can then go on the site. You can search 06107 or 06119 or whatever you want to search, or West Hartford, Connecticut. And it will zero you in on the West Hartford section of the map, and you'll see all the little photographs pinned. Mm. Along with the photograph, you can have a little caption that talks about what that photograph is. And before I was the director, I was the local history librarian, and my thought was, what a great way to capture all those photographs that are sitting mm -hmm. in your closet mm -hmm. uh, on a shelf and someday could go into the trash. But really, that's West Hartford's current history because mm -hmm. history is forming all the time. So we've been fortunate to have... Um, Lots of old photos of Celebrate West Hartford, the Memorial Day Parade. Mm -hmm. You can see me as a brownie in 1961. <laughs> and um, I was a brownie, girl's cat, yeah, right. same. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> a in front of those pictures. Years, a few years later, but a not few much. Years later. <laughs> but <laughs> the, one of the wonderful things about that program is that in the background of a lot of the photographs, you see buildings that no longer exist. Right. Um, old Center School, mm -hmm. which was along North Main Street, mm -hmm is in the background of a picture of one of those Memorial Day parades. So there's history that, but for that photograph, we would kind of lost track of. Right. So we started West Hartford Places and Faces, and then about three years ago, I got a phone call from a man at Google who said, you know, we're doing a project with a library in California, Santa Ana Public Library, and we noticed that your West Hartford Places and Faces site is really pretty robust. Mm. And we'd like to see if you are interested in doing a project with us called Memories of Migration. And that's the one we got the major grant for. Right. So we were part of a, a group of libraries around the country. Santa Ana was the project lead. But then Queens and some libraries in New Mexico were all part of the project along with us. And we have just kind of wrapped that up. And that's okay. the event you were you were. Lucky able enough to, come, to attend. Yes, lucky so. enough to attend. Mm. And what this was, this is a, just such a wonderful project on so many fronts. Um, our teen librarian had the opportunity to educate teens, local teens, and train them as historians to capture the stories of people who have moved to West Hartford from other parts of the country or other parts of the world. And so these kids during the summer, it's kind of like a summer camp opportunity, and they had a chance to learn how to do video editing, how to do an oral history interview. Mm -hmm. They wrote their own interviews. They worked with, um, they had a, a program from Katie Tularski on WNPR. Um, Dr. Tracy Wilson, mm -hmm. our local town historian, worked with the kids on the history of immig immigration in West Hartford. And then the kids, we had residents, we went to celebrate this year, and people signed up mm -hmm. to participate and share their stories. So the kids did a series of nine videos, which were then edited and tweaked on, you know, what's, how did you come to live in West Hartford? When did West Hartford start to feel like home? And so forth and so on. And those are all available through this history pin site, through our West Hartford Faces and Paces places project, which you can get to either just by going to History Pin or by going to now our this website. this was a one-time funding opportunity, but your mission mm -hmm. was to make this an ongoing We hope to project. make it ongoing, yes. Um, and West Hartford is a place where we do have a lot of immigrants that have come from other, pla other parts of the country but also uh, from around the globe, right. and uh, and it I learned a lot actually even attending uh, that that uh, program, uh, and uh, the students learn so much. So much. For, yes. And this is a very important lesson for all of us to learn that we are a country of immigrants, and and all of our stories of how right. we came 
to be in the United States mm -hmm. of America. So, uh, and then obviously in West Hartford. So, uh, and we are so lucky that we have such a diverse community. Right. Um, so we, I, I, I couldn't be more excited yeah, about this project <laughs> and, and the potential for this to carry on. And I will say West Hartford has a very rich history of, of developing people that are creative all yes. around the country I meet people and actually around the world I've met people from West Hartford that have such fond memories of an experience that they had um, that taught them either to tell a story or to play a song or or some right. kind of family uh, memory that is so powerful uh, and shaped their lives and I can only imagine how these experiences are going to shape not only the immigrants that right. can tell their stories and are, are being empowered to tell their story, uh, but also those students that are learning exactly. on, on how. It was a great experience for the kids. What we hope to do is bring the kids who learned the process the first time back as mentors mm. and next summer bring in a new fresh crop of kids that the older ones will mentor the younger ones and we'll do a, another series of these interviews and we already have people who have risen, raised their hands and said yes and I'd like to be interviewed. Because the progression of developing somebody not only as a, a learner but then as a teacher, teacher right. you know and that's such a, exactly. an important skill and and can and oftentimes teachers will say I learn more from my students then right. and so that's a whole another exactly. learning opportunity. I wish I, I my children are a little older. I wish they <laughs> they would have loved that project and but maybe maybe grandchildren someday. Right, Not exactly, Sherry. Not too soon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and I and then I now I want to transition to the community conversations yes. that you've been hosting. And can you just tell us what what you've been doing and and then mm -hmm. we can get into some feedback and trends. Okay. The um, we're in the middle of strategic planning mm -hmm. and um, we're, we're actually kind of wrapping that up, hoping to write the plan. We, we are writing the plan, hoping to take that to the library board. And then you'll come back. And then we'll come back to the town. Right, I will. Tell us <laughs> It'll be on our website, yes. too. Um, but as part of any strategic planning process, um, it's important, obviously, to tap into your stakeholders, and that's our community. So we did two important things. One was that we had an online and paper print survey that we did and we had over 1800 people answer wow. that survey which is that phenomenal is when I look at what other libraries of similar size have been able to do with their survey instrument we nailed it <laughs> we were um, very involved we do and it, it that's it shows it it, yes, it, it was good but the other thing that we did along that uh, the same lines was to hold a series of five community conversations. So on the survey, we actually asked if you were interested in participating in a survey. And then we called people and said, you know, you said you might be interested. Here's, here are the dates. When would you like to come? And so we did them in each of our library locations. We did different times of day. We wanted to be sure that everybody who wanted to had an opportunity. And these all followed the same format. And it was to sit people around a table and start with a series of sort of open-ended questions. And the first one was, what makes a vibrant community, any vibrant community, what makes that a healthy, vibrant place to live that you'd want to be part of? And they brainstormed a whole list of ideas. And from there we said, well, how about West Hartford? How does it match up to all those hmm. words you've just given us? And they told us that. And then we said, and how can the library help to support those important ideas for making a healthy community. And they told us what they thought about, the, that the library could do. And then we further drilled down and said, well, what, you know, what have other libraries that you've been in, what do they do that you think we should do? What do we do well? And we got tremendous feedback. Um, one thing that's very nice on both the survey and in the conversations, people here like us. <laughs> we're, we're the happy place. <laughs> and that's kind of nice. Okay. So the community conversations were really positive. And one of the major pieces of feedback was that they want the opportunity to talk to community leaders. Mm -hmm. And from that has come the opportunity that you and I are looking forward to in January. Can that's we right. talk about yes, that a little let's bit? Yes, let's see. <laughs> well, I, so I have a couple of the things that I'm doing as mayor. One is this show yes. to, to help expose our residents to various corners of our, of our um, town, but also uh, many exciting things going on, and to do outreach and meet residents. And so I have posted office hours 
And the f beginning, they were very well attended, and now they've dropped off a little bit. And I, we were trying to figure out how best I want to be in the community and hear what people have to say. And so in our discussions, you said, why don't you come to the library system? And so. Right. So yeah. Sherry's going to be with us at the Facts and Branch Library. Okay. I've forgotten the date. January 28th, I think. It January, was a Saturday. It's a Saturday, last Saturday in January. Yes. And um, from 11 to 12.30, mm -hmm. it will be mayor's off open office hours. Um, you do need to sign up so that we can plan. Um, but it's going to be, again, this opportunity for people to, to speak to you directly. And one thing we were told is that people, they, they like that idea of sitting around a table and everybody gets a chance. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to try and structure it in a similar way so that you have a chance to really listen and they have a chance to really communicate to you the things they think are important. And I think you'll be amazed. It's, I'm sure West I Hartford will. is I'm such a great place to live, but we both know that. Yeah. <laughs> and we've had certain things. We've had coffee yes. conversations mm -hmm. that Marshall Lewis had done. Yes, we used to do coffee talk. And exactly. Which was really a, a nice thing, but mm -hmm. it was this, it was a lot of the same people. Mm -hmm. And we ended up I and I would look around the room and there were elected officials talking to each other exactly. and there was not the same engagement necessarily. And we, that's what we were told. as leaders right. have a really important mission to listen. Right. Uh, and there's so much coming at our residents that, uh, you know, I think that they feel like they have no avenue to be heard. Right. And that's what we're trying to um, make sure that we have a path for that. And I, I hope this helps, and I, I'm, I'm really looking well, forward to it. Well, we're excited. We, and we, we are going to have some food, right? Yes. I'm a Jewish mother, so <laughs> I, gotta, I have to have food. So that's always helpful. But um, I, So how many, group, how many people were in the group, and how did you the gather The groups this? ranged from about 10 people. Well, no, I think we had 12 in our smallest group and um, just over 20 in our larger group. And um, again, it was a chance for everybody. We, we, had, we had a facilitator and we had two note takers, mm. one on the whiteboard. That was one of my questions was yeah, how you One on the whiteboard the and one just scribing. Mm. And um, you know, as I said, we followed the exact same format for each one and we asked exactly the same questions. And it, it just went so well. Each group, and there'll be a, a report on this as part of our long-range planning mm -hmm. document, final document, but one of the things that um, was interesting was that each group sort of latched onto an idea mm -hmm. that they really wanted to talk about, and they were all over the map. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, very different and depended somewhat on where you were, but one of the things we did keep hearing was that people want, they want to be heard, they want a voice, they want to understand how our government works in town, our local mm -hmm. government, um, and they want to feel comfortable participating. Yeah, and that's part of the problem, I think. We, it's not always easy for people. I, I mean, just transportation time right, to come into right town hall, mm -hmm. and it's intimidating. I actually have testified in at state hearings, and uh, I've only, I also had testified in town council before and board of education years ago, and it is intimidating, yes. and it can be very hard, especially if English is your second language, exactly. or you know you work two jobs, mm -hmm. or you are a single parent, and so those, those we understand, or right. I understand that, those challenges, and I wanna make it that path easier, so Thank you for opening these doors and, and uh, connecting with our community. As I say, you are the kitchen of the town, I think. That's what I think of oh, it as. Oh, I like sort of that. that around, you know, that kitchen table when they talk <laughs> we, we, about We, we would like to be the kitchen table. Yeah. That's absolutely, libraries often, for years, they used living room. Yeah. Um, but that's a little formal. And yeah, I, formal. I like the kitchen. Mm. I like the kitchen table. There's a that's, lot of important stuff. I'm going to go right back and table. tell the staff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I just wanted you to talk about, we're, we have a few minutes left, and I just wanted you to, to talk about a little bit how, library change, how libraries change lives maybe and some of the trends that are happening nationally because we really have been in this technology transformation Absolutely. and we have reacted. It's been about 10 years, I think, that we've seen remarkable changes. Well, it's interesting for me. You know, I've been with the West Hartford Public Light. It'll be 40 years in January, wow. if you can believe that. We're very I, lucky I was to just have an had. infant when I started. <laughs> but yes. um, you were 10. I was 10, <laughs> right? But the the change that technology has brought brought over the life of my library career. I, you know, there were no computers. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it was the card catalog. Mm -hmm. And obviously all of that is gone and life is very different. And questions that used to, I used to come to the end of and say, I, you know, I can't help you. There is, I don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. I, we never hit that anymore. The, right. there, we can always find another place to look for an answer. Even so. if it's false. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we try not to do that. <laughs> it kind of goes against our code. Um, huh. But the, um, the American Library Association, one of their key, you know, sort of advertising slogans is libraries transform, libraries change lives. And we see that every single day. And um, I have, I was just talking with another staff member about somebody who comes to our library on an almost daily basis. I think he works in the center. Um, he uses our databases. He looks for things. And I got into conversation with him one day and um, I said, you know, you, you come to the library a lot. And he said, I do. He said, I, it's, it's where I like to come because when I come here, he's, a, he's an older person. He said, I come here be, before I go to my job because it's a place where I know I won't get myself into trouble. And if I'm out on the street, I mm -hmm. might. Wow. Um, that's an important role to mm -hmm. be playing. Mm -hmm. And so we're proud of that. We're in the school systems. We're doing a lot more community outreach. Um, that's important to me and important to our staff. We have a new community engagement librarian. Yes, I wanted to, yeah. Who is based at, home-based, we call them home bases now, at um, Faxon in Elmwood. He lives in Elmwood. He is a member of our local Nepalese community. And um, he's a wonderful addition to our staff. So we're thrilled to have him working both with the Nepalese community, but with the Laotian community, with the Spanish community, with the Portuguese community, with the business community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's our person going out. We also have asked one of our children's specialists, Jane Breen, who's been with us for almost 20 years, to be the point person for outreach to our West Hartford Public Schools. So she has visited the family resource centers, the preschool programs that are in the public schools, and she's going out to help those children understand that a library is not just something you do at school, that there's library outside of school because we're open right. a lot more than school is. And we're an avenue that has other resources that can serve them, as you said in the beginning, from childhood all the way to the end of the line. Mm -hmm. And we're really the agency that does that. We're an educational agency that goes Cradle to you're grave. You're social, you're educational, you're cultural, and I do think that you are, you have, uh, uh, the, I think, the best pulse on the community, um, uh, or have the ability, I think you do, um, and you've been working so hard to get that, that feedback, but I think you have a true understanding of how special West Hartford is and how we can make it even better and build on, on our successes uh, and strengthen that communication, um, that connection, that make community really, really, really special and hopefully bring us to the next uh, decade of our generation of, of greatness and, uh, and a really special community to be a part of. I just want to thank you for all you do. I know you, that your job does not, it's not a nine to five job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you work very, very hard and we're so grateful and we are really, your leadership has been transformative um, and I'm, I'm excited for our meeting in Faxon Me and and actually finding out much more about the survey and uh, the survey community conversations and all the information. So thank you so much for being here, uh, for, for, um, for all you do for our community and, um, and come to the library. Look up the, if you, if you want to give a gift to somebody that you know is a patron, you have two, organ two foundations that you can, right. can 501c3s that you can <laughs> donate to. So, um, and I look forward to seeing you again at Talk of the Town.